Welcome back everybody and welcome to part 7. Now, I shall do a, a quick overview because this video is going to be lots of bits and pieces to start getting this uh, diorama finished off. Now, we on the last video we did all the block work, we put the drains in, uh, if I can find a pointy stick, we put all the drains in, we did all the block work, we put the sewer in, uh, which turned out really well. I'm really happy with that. And what I've also done is I've got some topsoil from my garden. I dried it out in the oven. I sieved it down to some uh, real fine stuff, mixed it with PVA, and actually given this all the sides a coat as my base uh, now to start uh, weathering in and making it look more realistic. Now. I can't say this is the front or the side because this diorama works all the way around. So uh, coming around to the back or the side or whichever way you want to call it, uh, the sewer actually comes out the back. Uh, I've done exactly the same with the soil again, uh, giving this all a coat ready to be start to be you know weathered in. So that's all done and complete. Moving around to the inside now, we've still got quite a bit on this inside to do. We've still got another floor to go in, we've still got the roof to go on and get tiled. Uh, wallpaper, bits and pieces like that inside this. So there's still quite a bit of work to, to actually do in there. Uh, onto the following oh, other side. <coughs> Excuse me. I've done exactly the same again. I've given this a coat of the topsoil with PVA. And virtually just got this ready uh, so in this video we'll be doing lots of bits and pieces I'd like to get the trim on for the base to get that all done uh, maybe get a coat of varnish on it I shall have to have words with bees and see what uh, sort of color he would be he wants it in so we'll be doing that uh, but firstly we will be turning our attention to the railings now I've already started I've done one set uh, more is just experiment to see different ways and I'm quite happy with them so I'm gonna make uh, some up for the sides some small bits hanging off these ends and also we're gonna make some uh, rails up to go actually in these cellar openings because they would have had bars across them so we'll be doing that uh, and We'll be just going through all the bits and pieces, trying to get everything finished off. Uh, we'll probably be back inside, putting the floor in, getting the wallpaper on. We may even get to the roof. I don't know. Uh, just depends how long uh, each section takes. So let's get on, and I'll run through how I'm making the railings. Okay, first things first. Now, railings. Uh, this is the way I do it. Uh, it's just that I feel they look the best. So to start off with, you need to actually get yourself some. I have some. I'm doing this close up. This is going to be difficult, but I cut some styrene down. Now this, I cut this off a sheet. It's 0 0.8, and I've cut it at two millimeters wide. And what we need to do first is get your strips, measure up. And cut a piece to fit into there, like so. Right now, we've got that sorted, we'll move that out of the way so I won't knock it off. So, once you've got your piece of uh, two millimeters by 0 0.8 cut to size to fit where you want it, is then to actually use the brick coursing as your gauge for the spacings between the uh, rails. Now I'm setting mine up at every two courses. So every two co every two bricks we put a mark, excuse the big finger, in onto the brick uh, joint. So we go two, two, two and we do that all the way along got the 
wrong glasses on for this, but there we go. So we go all the way along, every two pauses. And when you come to the last one, especially on this particular wall, uh, you've got one set at one brick away, which isn't a problem, which works quite well actually, because when we come to actually putting a piece on this, it actually gives us one bar to actually go into the brickwork. So it does work out okay. So once you've got that marked up, 0 0.8 uh, drill bit, because that is what thickness wire I'm going to be using. And then we drill our holes all the way through, like so. Once you've drilled them through, I will say to you is use a, uh, a 0 0.8 drill bit, that's for your wire. Then use a millimeter, one millimeter drill bit, just to give it a little bit of a countersink and to take the, the burr off. It just makes it that little bit easier for when you're actually trying to thread uh, the wire through. And also when you come to glue it, it just gives it that little bit of a lip just for the glue to sit in. So once you've done all that, if you just lay your piece of styrene that you've made the drill, drill holes in, and then actually just use that as your guide. I right, go, go along, use that, and drill your holes through it. Right, so, but making sure you keep it in place, then just take it out. I mean, you can lightly just do it to start off with, like so, then take it off, do them all, then drill them. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm, I'm going to run along this. I'm going to drill all these out. And uh, when I've drilled them all out, I'll be back. Right, I've drilled all the holes along the top of the wall. And that is the piece of styrene that we're actually going to be using at the top. Now, we also need to measure off another small piece of styrene from the top of that piece of styrene to just the underneath of the pier. Now, this is going to be going this end against the wall to actually support everything at the end. So, once you've cut that off and everything's done, the next thing is to get our rails in. Now, all I'm using is, you can see that, some 0 0.8, uh, this is jeweler's wire. Uh, it's pretty good stuff actually. Copper wire, but it's uh, coated in silver. Uh, that's what I'm using and in the background here what I've got is uh, one of my paint palettes with a little bit of uh, foil in and some super glue and we're just going to dip the ends in and push them into our holes as simple as that now back in the day as uh, my friend Bob says they would have uh, actually just drilled the holes and inserted the uh, rails in and then topped them up with some lead to hold them in place but we're using super glue so i'm going to go all the way along there now and glue them in then once they're dry i should come back to you super glue is dry and also what i've done if you would notice i've actually cut the rails down to different levels this will just make it slightly easier for when you're actually threading it through because then you can actually get one through and then the second one and then the third. It just makes it that little bit less complicated to get it all through, like so. And there we go, we've got actually got a rail on. Now, we also need to fit the piece of styrene that we cut to go at this end so i'm going to need to put you on pause and just turn everything round because i'm at the wrong angle okay back at a different angle now when after this piece of styrene up that we cut for this end there's a bit of a gap down the back so it's actually slid down and it sort of it's too short so i've cut a new piece of styrene which is going to sit down there in that gap and then we're going to glue it to that top bit. Now I'm going to get that glued in 
and uh, then I shall come back to you. Okay, that bit has been glued in. I glued it in behind the back there and at the top, making sure that it wasn't connected to the house. Fantastic. Now, if you get another piece of your styrene and just lay across the top just to check that that piece is level, which it is. So I'm quite happy now to glue the actual rails down. Uh, all I can say is when you're super gluing them down, a little bit of a build up at the top won't hurt, but uh, a lot of build up will. So all I do is as I go along, is use a cotton wool bud and just take the excess off but you'll get just enough in that hole there to hold it all in place now I'm going to get them glued and uh, then I shall come back to you okay it's all dry and now what we've got to do is just cut them down to level now all I'm using I'm going to get my big hands in the way is a piece of the uh, 0 8 by 2 mil wide styrene that I've been using as the actual frames laying a piece of along using my side cutters and just cutting it off level with the top it's as simple as that so I'm going to go all the way along there nothing too mad right so when we take that out and do a bit of super glue there holding it and then we've got them all at the same length now that's how I do my rails coat of black paint and if we bring you up turn this round cut of black paint and they come out really okay I'm, I'm more than happy with them so I've just now got to do you back round again. I've got a small piece here on the edge to do, which I'm going to do exactly the same. Is glue a piece up, one bar down, and we're going to make that. And also, I've got to do the uh, cellar openings, and I'm doing exactly the same thing. All I'm doing is cutting a focus your wall back in again. I'm cutting a piece of styrene drilling my holes in, pushing my wires through, once they're dry we're going to trim the back off so that will sit flush against there, exactly the same then we slide another one on, position it and glue it, it's as simple as that, there's no great mystery to it. Okay I've done a couple of things, I've given the rails a coat of black paint just to finish them off that's it just one coat I'm going to be coming back to them later on also what I've done I have popped the drain covers out uh, cuts I'll cut a hole just made a hole in the bottom of the drain cover and we have put a little bit of uh, wash in there just to give it try and give it a little bit of depth and uh, a little bit of indication that there is a an actual hole underneath there I've done the grouting with uh, the coarse sand, just filled everything up, and also I've just given it a black wash. That is it, that's all I've done on there. I will be coming back to that later uh, on the final uh, purge through, should I say, of doing all my weathering. So I'm happy to leave that, and I really now want to get on with the inside of this house because I've got uh, a floor to put in and a ceiling and also I've got the roof to do. I've already made a start on the frame so I should put you on pause and we'll have a quick look at that. Okay we're going to be moving on now to the first floor in this little build. Now as you can see I've already made my framework up for the first floor. Now I made that exactly the same way as we did the ground floor so I'm not going to linger too long on it. The only difference being is that I built this one on my bench where we built that one 
uh, and fixed it in place as we went. The reason I built this on my bench is because we need to put the, the lap and plaster ceiling on it. So uh, it would be rather difficult trying to get plasterboard to, you know, underneath that small gap. So that's the reason why I built it on my bench. Now what I should be doing, I'm going to get on and get the floorboards done. I should give it a wash, no different to what we did on the ground floor. And then I will come back to you when I start the lap and plaster and I'll run through just roughly what I'm doing on the lap and plaster. I know we've been through it on other videos, but I'll just refresh your memory on how I'm doing it. Right, the floor now is, oh, all the planks have been put on, should I say, and I've given it a, a coat of wash. So all we need to do now is turn it over and start putting the actual uh, ceiling on. Now, I'm going to be doing lath and plaster again. Now, I've already got battens that I cut up from last time. Now, these are 0 0.9 thick, and I've roughly cut them at about 0 0.9 thick. So, roughly a mil, a mil square, that will do you ideal. Now, I'm not going to put laths all over. What I'm actually going to do, if I get this round the right way, is that I've got some 0 0.9 balsa wood which I'm going to cover half of the actual ceiling like so because we're going to use plasterboard on top of this so the only area that I'm actually going to put laths on is this area here so what I'm going to do first is I'll get these bits glued down and then I'll come back to you and we'll just run through gluing the laths down and we'll get on with it right then pieces glued on nice and dry and then we can move on to the next bit now the next bit is putting our laths in along this side. Now I've got a little pile here of offcuts, which so happens are the right size. So all I'll be doing is I'll be gluing my laths starting from the bottom here in a straight line, keeping them straight as I can, and I shall be doing it all the way along. Uh, just leaving a little tiny bit of a gap between, not a great deal, probably the thickness of a piece of paper. So I'm going to get on with that and I will be back with you shortly and we'll get on with the next bit. Okay, all the battens have been glued on as straight as I could possibly get them. Also what I've done, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up, but I have drawn a pencil line all the way down and on the other side. Now that is the actual size of the actual building. So this is the line that I actually want to bring my plaster up to now. Now the plaster, uh, plaster sheets, which I'm going to be using, mold number will be at the bottom of the screen. And I've got all the broken bits here, and I've already started because I want to use these broken bits up. Because along this edge, I don't want a dead straight line, I want a sort of unevenish line, and it's a great way of using up your broken sheets. So, I'll be using the broken bits probably cutting bits and pieces very easily done let me find a scalpel uh, just going from that mark uh, trying to join it up like so you get the general idea of making that edge up not straight, but sort of a little bit wany, as they call it. Uh, the rest of it will be filled in with the full sheets, like so. Just glued down. These will be glued down with the PVA, and we'll be building that. I'll be building that up right up to the top. Now, I did do a step-by-step -step video of how I actually did this, which I will link to the end of this video for you. So you can pop across and have a look at that. So I'm going to get on and get this all uh, glued down. And I should be back with you shortly. Right, I've completed all the plaster on this uh, ceiling. 
Now I'm going to leave this to dry uh, for a good few hours because I want to get a sander and sand this nice and uh, flat because there's a couple of little bits that are sticking up but we can rectify that with just a piece of sandpaper and that will come up nice and flat. So what we're actually going to do, we're going to put it in place for the moment, like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on and get this plasterboarded out. I'm going to get all this back wall plasterboarded and we're going to get all this front wall around the windows done. Uh, ready for putting the window casings on and getting this uh, second floor, sorry, first floor finished so we can actually get on with the roof because uh, I just want to get on now. Oh, I just want to get things done and finished off. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to lay this on its side and I'm going to get this back half glued in. But I'll be backwards and forwards to you so you can see what's happening. Okay, I've done all the plastic boarding. All I've got now is the windows to frame up and skirting board and picture rail. I'm going to leave it to dry for a little while because I really want to get a sanding stick on it because I have some really beautiful wallpaper. Here we go, look at that nice bedroom wallpaper to go on there, which I shall be putting on. The floor is still, I haven't glued that, so we've still got the uh, two levels, so I can still get to the bottom floor. And like I say, I'm going to leave this now to dry for a few hours and then I shall come back to it and give it up a sand get it all flattened down and then i'll come back to you and we'll get on with a bit of wallpapering i think okay just a quick one on sanding for those who are interested now this plaster it clogs up your sanders ever so quickly now i'm using the cheap pound shop sanders these are the nail files uh i find these last a lot longer than the other make sanders because these clog them up too quick and you're forever cleaning them out so i find the cheap ones are the best ones because you can get a lot of them for a few quid and you'll find that when you're sanding these they do clog up as well but instead of wiping them on your trousers if you just get yourself an old tea towel it comes out pretty easy and you can just keep sanding as you can hear a couple of seconds of sanding and that's blocked but old tea towel and you, you'll make the wipe happy as well because if you keep wiping it on the on your trousers it's her that's got to uh, deal with them when they go in the wash so that's just a quick one and uh, what I use for sanding Okay, now I've done all my sanding, I've flattened everything down, I've given everything a coat of, well all the plaster, should I say, a coat of PVA, a uh, 50-50 mix, and let that dry. Now also what I've done is I've drawn my picture rail lining, as well as my skirting board. Now, I'm going to move on and put a bit of wallpaper on. Now one of the viewers did say it would be easier, wouldn't it, to put the wallpaper on first, then put skirting boards and everything else on top of it, which I do agree with him, it will be easier. So, I'm going to put you on pause, I've already cut the wallpaper ready, and I'll just run through how I'm going to do it. Okay, right, the wallpapering, now it just comes in these little sheets like that, and I've picked the most glorious wallpaper that I could find. Now I've cut a piece down one strip to fit along this back wall. Now I'm just using I just use the lines that I put in for the picture rail because the wallpaper never went above the picture rail and I've done it down to the skirting. Uh, the second piece I just cut and cut out the shape of the windows. Nothing to this whole thing's going to collapse in a minute. I can see it coming because the floor ain't fixed. So that's where my second piece. I've just cut that round uh, the windows because we will be boxing in the windows and putting in the skirting. So 
it's going to trim it up nice. Now I'm going to have a go at this with uh, PVA. So I'm just going to mix PVA down with a little bit of water and paint it on and we'll see how it goes. PVA and a little bit of water, it works and it does the job okay. Uh, the one thing I will say though is the first piece I put on, I put PVA straight onto the wall and we got loads and loads of bubbles on it. They've pulled themselves out, no problems. The second piece, I put PVA on the wall and also I put PVA on the back of the paper. Let it to soak just for a few seconds, put it on, no bubbles at all. So doing a PVA on the wall and on the back of the paper, it just makes life a little bit easier. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna cut all my skirting boards to length. Uh, the surrounds for the windows I'm going to get give them all a coat of wash get them all cut to length so all I need to do is glue them on and that means we don't have to do no painting uh, and we're going to get a, a reasonably nice finish now I'm going to get on with that and I should be back with you in a few seconds okay I thought I'd do a bit just before I went any further uh, what I've done the first floor or ground floor should I say I've just given that a coat of paint. I was going to put some paper on it, but it was going to be mega hassle. Uh, so I thought I'll paint it instead and we'll save the wallpaper for something else. So that's had a coat of paint. I've actually uh, fixed the ceiling and the floor in. That's all been tidied up and cleaned up. And it looks pretty good too. I'm more than happy with it. Uh, moving up the first floor i've managed to get the skirting boards on so far i'm going to move on now to doing the windows and the uh, picture rail which i'm going to do right now so that's where i've got to so far so i'll be back with you in a little while right back with you final clip uh the top well first floor should i say all completed uh, i put the picture rail on i boxed the windows in it just needs going round now and doing all them final little bits of touching in and things like that, which I'm going to do last of all. Now, uh, my next video is going to be the roof. Now, the roof is going to take a whole video up because there is a lot to do because of the shape of this particular roof. And also, I want to do proper lath and plaster on it because I want to see the plaster coming through the laths. So when you look into the actual loft space, you've got that view, just a slightly different one of seeing the lath and plaster and the plaster mushrooming through the actual laths themselves. So that's on the next video, but this video we did manage to achieve quite a lot. The ceiling's all been done, the floor, which is great, the wallpapering, all the finishing off. It's all complete. Now, and like I say, that's down to bees now to just dress it up. We also managed to achieve all the railings on the front, which is brilliant. We did do a bit of wash as well and got that. There's still quite a way to go. There's still quite a bit of weathering uh, to be done on this, but I will do that all at the end. I should just do one video and I should just do short clips of me uh, doing the weathering and getting everything finished off but a general overview of it I am uh, happy it's, it's turning out really well so what I'm going to do now I've got to do some close-up pictures of what we've actually done this time and I shall tag them straight on afterwards and the only thing I can say now is thank you very much for joining me and uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one